Hello, hello. Happy Wednesday, everyone. It is time for our um, uh, second uh, conversation of support for the week. Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays in the afternoon, depending on what's going on in my life, is when I come live. And my name is Laura, and I am here to have conversations of support and encouragement. And uh, um, today's, uh, it, this might be a short live, because I know my uh, iPad's running out of um, power, so we're going to do the best that we can. Sorry, I had to move there. Um, but today's topic is um, about being a caregiver um, and um, taking care of our loved ones. Um, there are many types of caregivers out there. We have caregivers that are like me and my husband that have a, a child with physical disabilities that requires um, us to assist him um, every day. Um, uh, our son is 24, he has Duchenne muscular dystrophy and uh, can't really do anything um, a whole lot on his own uh, right now. So, um, uh, so he requires, you know, 24 seven care, 365 days out of the year. Um, and we're happy to do it. We uh, love having him. We, um, uh, don't take advantage. Uh, don't um, uh, take advantage of the fact, or or take for granted the fact that he's still with us. Um, so you know, caregiving um, can be exhausting. Um, in our situation with our son, you know, my husband gets up um, every night um, because it's a father-son thing. Um, but he, our son needs to be turned, and so about every hour and a half, two hours every night. Um, uh, he has to get up and uh, turn him and make him comfortable and all of that stuff. Plus he does the showering and uh, our son can't really feed himself anymore so um, he hand feeds him, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, now our son does still have some ability to use his hands so he still uses his computer, laptop and things like that. And uh, um, sorry, didn't know what was going on with the neighbor, but um, looks like they're okay. <laughs> um, but so we, um, you know, it's it's caregiving though. We're we're taking care of our child that we've been blessed with. Um, our daughters also help when they're around that kind of stuff. Um, there are caregivers of adult parents. You know, maybe it's our parents that we have to take care of our elderly parents uh, or a grandparent um, maybe they have it maybe it's just because they're older and can't get around as much maybe it's because they have the beginnings of dementia or um, uh, Alzheimer's uh, you know or Parkinson's or some other kind of situation that requires them to um, need help as well now there are places out there that offer the um, um, assistance, you know, respite care, um, nurses who come in and help do some of that stuff, but not everybody can um, make that happen or wants to make that happen. I know for our son, he doesn't want anybody else in here coming to take care of him and, you know, we'll deal with it if we have to uh, um, at some point, but for right now, it's fine with just my husband and I, but as caregivers, you can burn out, you can get exhausted. Just physically being exhausted yourself causes you then to feel emotionally exhausted, right? So I had a request from a, a friend to talk about this topic, um, but I found a little um, um, a, a graphic that says, it has the word caregiver spelled down downwards, and C is for caring, A means always there, R is ready to give their all, E is encouraging, G is gracious, I is incredible, V is valuable, E is exceptional, and R is respectable. So what we do need to remember as caregivers that we need to respect the person that we're caregiving and that care, that person that we're giving the care to needs to respect us as well. Um, but sometimes it's much harder for them to show their thanks and they, they they wish their lives were different and that they didn't need to have the, all this help. So sometimes just they don't expect to hear the words thank you very often. 
Um, and if you do, it's wonderful. If you don't, you're still appreciated, you know. Um, uh, but just remember, everybody's coming from a different place, both the person we're taking care of and us as the caregivers, right? Um, let's see. Caregiving is universal. There are only four kinds of people in the world. Those who have been caregivers, those who currently are caregivers, those who will be caregivers, and those who will need caregivers. Um, and that was by Rosalind Carter. Um, but, you know, isn't that true? We all need help at some point. Have you had a surgery or something where you um, couldn't be out and about doing your regular errands and you needed help from others? That meant somebody was taking care of you and uh, you were the recipient of that care, right? So at some point, we all have experienced this. And at some point, we're all experiencing caregiving, you know, um, caregiving our own children, our healthy children, when they get sick, you're taking care of them when they get the flu or um, they fall down and scrape their knee, right? You are taking care of each other. We are taking care of each other emotionally and mentally as well. You know, I, as a recovery coach, we're caregivers in in the fact that we work with the person that's in recovery or trying to stay in recovery that person is either an addict or a former addict um, and they need the care and the love and the understanding to be retaught healthy coping skills right so that's still a form of caregiving um, and so when you support and encourage others we are being a caregiver and that is ultimately what we need to be doing. We need to remember to encourage and support. And then we need that same courage and support that we're giving from others, you know? So if you know someone who is a caregiver, who is busy every day, always taking care of somebody, doesn't get to go out, you invite them, continue inviting them out, make them feel at least included that way even if they ultimately tell you no sorry i can't because i need to be at home with my child or i need to be home uh, with my parents or whatever whoever it is that they're taking care of still inviting them lets them know that they're thought of that they're um, uh, remembered and appreciated um, and included and then it's up to them to be able to figure out if they can take that little bit of time away, which they probably need, um, and come and, and be re renewed by that friendship. Those people that who can encourage them and remind them of the great stuff that they're doing for their child or for their um, family member. Um, and it doesn't even have to be a family member. Maybe this is your career. Maybe this is your job where you are a caregiver. And um, there are so many families out there who don't have help and who don't have support. And so they have to rely on getting outside help. So if you are one of those people, we truly appreciate you. We truly appreciate the fact that you're willing to still give your heart in uh, taking care of somebody that you're not, um, related to by blood or um, by friendship, you know, and all of that. Um, uh, I'm a very, I'm a very pro uh, caregiver person. Um, and it's probably because we live it, right? And I know I have several other uh, close friends who are caregivers as well. And, uh, you know, we all have our rough days and we all struggle sometimes and we feel like we give 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 and we can't give any more um, until we refuel ourselves and one way to refuel ourselves is when others tell us that we're doing a good job that we are showing love that we are taking care of our child uh, is supportive you know so, um, so take the time to go check on those people that you know are caregivers. Um, you have two hands, one to help yourself and one to help others. 
So don't ever pass up the opportunity to give help. Um, uh, we and, and sometimes it's not easy for us as caregivers to accept that help, but offer it um, and keep offering it until one day that person will say, okay, thank you for offering. Um, here are some t tips on how to avoid caregiver burnout. Um, speak up and ask for help. Tell your friends and family how they can help you. Be specific, just don't say, I don't know, or, um, you know, let them, you know, give them some task that they can actually help you with. Um, take care of your own health. Give yourself a break once in a while. Exercise, eat right, and learn good sleep habits. And you do the best you can with the sleep habits and, and the eating right and the exercise, right? But you do need to pay attention as a caregiver to your own health, too. Practice realism and acceptance. Focus on the things within your control and invest in a positive meaning and purpose. So, you know, we can't control the fact that our son um, has this disease. There's no cure for it, right? So we accept it, we're realistic about it, and we move forward and we look for all the positives. We didn't stop living just because he got that diagnosis of Duchenne. Um, or if or for the fact that I got a diagnosis of chronic kidney disease, you know um, But we do have to pay attention to our health. So I have to pay attention to mine, too um, Let's see. Oh, and if it, the the last tip here is join a caregiver support group Facebook is awesome for that. There are a lot of good things about Facebook and there's granted there's some rough stuff about Facebook, but one of the positives that I found is a support group. And I have connected with a lot of different Duchenne parents and we all support each other. Even if we never meet in person and we're from, um, I'm on the East Coast and a friend of mine is on the West Coast and even though she and I will probably never meet in person um, at this rate, um, both our sons are the same age, have the same diagnosis and everything. We connected to each other. We're very similar in personalities, and but we encourage each other. So from, from the West Coast, she can encourage me um, if I'm having a bad day, and I can encourage her if she's having a rough day, you know? Uh, so find a support network, a support group, whether it's local people that you can meet with in person, or if it's the social media route um, and, and connecting with people that way. Um, and one of the best ways to help prevent the burnout is to start each day with a grateful heart. Be grateful that you are healthy enough to be the caregiver to someone else. Be grateful that you have the physical abilities to help someone else who is not physically able to help themselves. And that will help your burnout. And that will uh, keep you focused on knowing that you're doing a great job at taking care of your child or your elderly parent or your neighbor or um, uh, whatever, whoever it is that you know. But if you know caregivers, please check on them. Please don't, don't just assume they can't go out with you invite them, include them, um, and give them the opportunity to be able to say, I'm sorry I can't go because I don't have anybody to help me take care of so-and-so. Or maybe they can say, oh, you know what? My husband's home tonight. I can go out with the girls for a, a two hour break and I'll give him a two hour break another night, you know, to go out with the guy friends, you know? So make sure you check on each other. Um, you know, caregiving is an honor that we have and we are all caregivers at some point. We take care of each other. Even if it's because you drank too much on one night uh, and somebody took care of you, that was a caregiver. You know, they gave you care and now you can pay it forward by helping out somebody else when they need, have that need. So just know as a caregiver myself, um, I appreciate you. I honor you. I respect you. If you need support, you need somebody just to vent to, please message me. 
um, let me know or reach out to someone, you know, tell your friend. That's the hardest thing for us is that we, when we feel like we, we're not a failure if we ask for help or we're not a failure if we just need to vent for a little bit and get some encouragement from others, right? That's actually being very confident and, and very sure of yourself to know that you can admit and share that with someone else. So be strong, my fellow caregivers. And uh, um, if you, um, you know, need resources or support, please let me know, and I'll do my best to try and help find them for you. Uh, so um, until then, we're going to chat on Friday. Um, you can let me know in the comments uh, uh, where you're watching from or what topic you would like to talk about. I have a couple other ideas uh, for the next couple of days, but you know, let me know what you're thinking about and uh, or you can private message, message me. That's fine too. So until then, have a wonderful day. Enjoy. Um, hopefully it's a, a nice sunny day for you. Yesterday was all rainy for us. So today is sunny. Um, enjoy that. Enjoy the person that you're taking care of and uh, um, treasure these moments because we never know how long they're going to last. Okay? So don't forget to wear your face mask and don't forget to smile while wearing your face mask. And I will see you all on Friday. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Bye.